what saved us is Europe. We, they understood what funk was about when we mixed it with, with the, the, our attitude and our, um, um, our style of music. And we, we, they, they understood. I mean, they didn't move forward. Uh, black were there. Um, um, popular and uh, it was just straight up rock. It was hard rock, death rock. It was, it was. I mean, any, uh, just about every place in in Europe. I think the most top band that they had was Van Halen, and they were a Dutch band. And the Dutch were uh, great musically. You know, they understood what was going on. They had, at the at the time they had a very cool rock scene, and they had a and German uh, Germans were. Or, or uh, uh, of course, they were hard rocking in the Scandinavian countries and Switzerland. And I mean, it was, we went over there. I mean, and, and I got to tell you the story. Um, we, uh, we, we had, we were having moderate success and especially down in, in, in here in the Southeast. Uh, we were playing colleges and all the rest of that. And then, and uh, we had rented this big house and we were, we were, um, um, we had a pool and we were just sort of living it up at the time, you know, sort of enjoying what we were doing. And um, in, the, in the interim, uh, uh, CBS or Epic sent records over to Europe of our, uh, our first record, I think it was, uh, yeah, it was the first record. Sent the first record over there. And uh, there was a guy who turned out to be one of the, our dearest friends, two of them, Arthur Mintink and, and um, um, the DJ over there is, was, was, um, and Alfred, uh, um, so when they send these, send these records over, uh, 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 um, Mr. Mintink's job is, is to take a stack of LPs and he would go home and he would s smoke and he would get stoned and he would listen to all these new records that had the potential to be played over in, over in Holland. And and uh, he came across our record, so he's he's sitting there and he said, oh, "Okay, I, I don't believe what I heard. I'm gonna play it again." He played it again. He said he, he must have played it six times um, and because it was uh, it was about uh, I would say about three or four o'clock in the morning, and he played this record until Alfred woke up and started his radio show early that morning. So. Um, well, actually, that afternoon, I think he might have taken a nap. So he calls Alfred and he says, "You gotta hear this record. I'm coming right down to the radio, to the radio station." So he said, "Yeah, you know, uh, that was his job." And so he goes down there, and 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 it's a couple hours before Alfred goes on the air. They sit up there and and uh, they do their thing. You know, Alfred was into his uh, his uh, uh, his vodka and smoking. And, he, and this was a ritual every day for him. And he was Dutch. And he was, um, and you know, they're into their marijuana. They, they're, not, they're not shy about that. They never have been. And uh, they actually had a, a, drug, a drug culture there early on, you know, that was very, really serious, like Needle Park, you know. And um, so... Uh, another three or four times, and he says, "I got to get in touch with these people. Who's who do I who would I call?" Somehow he got our number at the place that we was at the house that we had rented. Very nice place it was fantastic. Everybody had their own rooms. We had a swimming pool and a tennis court. We thought we were royalty. But for, and, and and you have to understand it's six hours different there. So uh, when he called. It was about four o'clock in the morning, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, so I said it was about 10 o'clock his time in the morning. It was about four o'clock in the morning. He's calling me and he says, am I talking about this finest? And I said, and, and we were dead sleep, man. We were just gotten to sleep, you know. Yeah, this is mother's finest who's calling. What do you want? And he said, my name is Alba Lagarda and I'm calling you from Holland and, uh, and, and, we're playing your record. It's a fabulous record. And I, I was, I couldn't talk. So I hung up on him. So then he calls again. And then he said, 
He said, Mr. Murdoch? I said, yes. He said, I am serious. I am calling from Holland. And then he said, I want you to just listen to this. I said, okay, what is it? And he turned up and he shoved the phone into a speaker who was playing Beats of the Rock. That was his first, that was his favorite song. It got to be a really big hit over there too. And then I was like, okay, and what can I do for you? He said, you have to come to Holland. And I'm going, okay, uh, you need to talk to some record people about all that. And uh, you have to call me later. And I hung up on him again. So he waited a couple hours and he called me again. And then, and I put him in touch with, uh, uh, with, uh, with the Romney on a promo tour of, of Holland and Germany. It seems that so the Germans had gotten hold to the record too. Not as, they weren't as uh, head over heels as, as, as Holland was. Holland's a very small country. And, and, and at the time, uh, Alfred was a very powerful DJ. He was like the guy because he played Van Halen and he knew Van Halen personally and he knew some other people who were Dutch artists and on and on. So he, uh, so, so they, they managed to get us over there. And while we were over there, we played these little clubs in Holland. Then we went to Germany, and Germany put us on a, on a show called Rock Palace. Have you ever heard of it? Yeah, yeah, I've seen that. That's a yes. tremendous oh, yeah, performance yes. you guys did on that. That was we didn't know what the hell was going on, but they said you got to do this TV show, and we said okay, no problem. And we come out there and 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 we did our sound check. Going, this is kind of, this is kind of cool. I I, I guess it was about ten thousand people there, and. Um, um, they were insane. It was just crazy. We went up, went up there. We were hollering and screaming at them. We couldn't see them because we were called virtually totally in the dark. Couldn't see anybody. All we would see was they were throwing garbage up in the air. All the garbage they would collect on the floors and they throw it up in the air. They were, they were. It was pretty sick. It was, it was really good. It was fantastic, and it was. And we did our whole show. We, didn't, you know, we just thought, hey, it's another. It sold to millions and millions of German speaking. Anybody who could speak German and understand German uh, would, would play that, uh, play this thing. They played all over the place. And in and and in Holland and Germany, to this day, you know, they, they're the huge markets for us. You know, um, we play every everywhere over there. As a matter of fact, I just got off the phone with the, the agent. We we're supposed to go back over there, but. Um, um, we play these these uh, uh, these festivals, a lot of open air festivals that they they put us on almost every year, you know. So that was pretty much our saving grace. And we went over there. It's it's, it's so different because you're not judged, you know. You're not judged for the same thing at least, you know. They were very very into what we were doing, you know. And we would play. With with the uh, open airs with Van Halen, anybody you could think of back in that in that in that day, I keep saying thing because because uh, they were very popular at the time, and um, a lot of a lot of German groups, a lot of pop groups, and a and a bunch of rock groups who were heavy rock groups that we would play with, and and they loved it, and we loved ACDC. I mean, I could. If I could remember all of them, but everybody you could probably think of back in that day, we played with on these concerts, and we were in and and we would play in the middle and uh, the, the opening acts, and then and then we got to the point where we were doing uh, 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 we would we would come on for for the act before the headliner, who was usually some super mega group. And uh, uh, that that sustained us. And we were going like, if America doesn't want to play us, then we got we all we have Europe, you know. And uh, it spread from to, to Switzerland, and then to, to, we played some very interesting places up in Scandinavia, um, England. Played a lot of England, and uh, uh, never Ireland or any place like that, but mostly mostly England. Uh, and uh, it has sustained us really for all this time, you know. Anytime you don't hear of us doing well anywhere else, we're doing well over there, you know, and we still do. Well, know? it's good to hear that uh, there was common sense somewhere on the on the on the globe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Hey, um, I want to ask you, uh, Glenn, a little bit about the band in the studio when you guys were cutting these albums. You know, the uh, next one was Another Mother Further, which had uh, great tracks on it like Baby Love and Truth Will Set You Free. And um, then you had Mother Factor with um, Can't Fight the Feeling, Love Changes, Don't Want to Come Back. These are great tunes. And um, just curious if you could speak a little bit to what the band was like in the studio when you guys created some of these tracks and what some of the band members brought to the sessions that were special mm. and just also speak a little bit about how joyce stood out as a as a front person and as a great singer yeah um we were um uh, about as normal uh, uh we were very into uh, being very democratic about about the law, about the songs that we had written and about who wrote, wrote them. Sometimes we probably shouldn't have <laughs> let some of those songs get on on the record. But uh, Wizard was 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 uh, uh, he came along as a really good songwriter. Joyce is really phenomenal because not only did she write songs, she would give the band their parts. You know, especially like in "Give You All the Love," that was like. Her brainchild from from he, she would she taught wizard the baseline, and um, uh, Mo he was he was always he he wasn't as as prolific a writer he would come in and get in there every now and again but his, his, his guitar playing was just we just fit I mean everything fit there was no problems uh, we didn't have attitudes uh, uh, about what we were doing we would we would garage band first you know for a month at least if we talk going into the studio we had to have at least a month to to, to shed and then we go into the studio and uh depending on who uh, who the producer was i was always trying to get the band to produce itself uh, uh it didn't get that way you know we weren't that sure of ourselves if there was any complaint at all it's, it's just um we weren't as sure of ourselves about what we can in the studio, rightfully so in those, because I mean, it was, it, they, they gave you a lot of money to, to do these records, you know, and nothing like today. And uh, you had, uh, you had to be very businesslike, which we weren't. Um, and you had to put, you had to get stuff on time, which we, uh, we weren't really concerned with time, you know? So a lot of times we had to break the session up because they gave us a, a, a um, a certain amount of time, then we would start working on songs and changing it, and they were like, um, um, BB was, uh, he was, he was between him and, um, um, what was my boy's name? I'm, I'm, I'm sick with that. With Pepe, he, they were the two best drummers that we had ever had, you know, Dion learned everything he, he, uh, from from them, but we, uh, you know, if like with with Worman, we were really good. Uh, he, was, he was a true producer because he would take what you had and he would, and he would make it better. You know, uh, uh, the, <laughs> the only thing that we may have uh, uh, rebutted against was that he wanted to play kabasa. <laughs> I don't know if you know what a kabasa is, but it's. It's a Latin instrument and, and it has a change around it. And you can, jiggy, 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 jiggy. Uh -huh. we wanted to do, we wanted to play kabasa on every freaking song, you know, <laughs> but, but it was, but it was good though. And, and really, if you listen, you can just hear his, he would always be, it's like a, he was like a time machine. I mean, he was like a, um, uh, what you would use for, for, for a rhythm machine now, you know, it just keeps, keeps you sort of in the pocket, you know? We put some to some early in in the song and some late in the song. He would have that kibasa in there, dude. And uh, but but other than that, he was one of the best producers that we had we had had. Uh, we had done some uh, uh, later on had had produced, uh, and of course now we're all the way into it now with modern technology. But basically. Which which one is that? Oh yeah, those are cool. Yeah, you can just keep yeah. talking. I just want to let people see some of the the covers. Oh, yeah. So, cool. uh, yeah, studio was we, we we were always we were always like the time restraints really 
messed with our heads, you know. Uh, they just wanted to, to, to uh, everything go really, really fast. So sometimes a couple of uh, 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 records that we did, we broke right in the middle of it and just said, "Listen, hey, um, we don't want to. We don't want to. Uh, uh, we need to change some things, you know." So we would stop the session. We shut it down, and that wasn't a good thing with the record company. So that was that was kind of a bad habit that we had, and. Um, uh, everybody was cooperative, especially on those first four, five, six, seven records. You know, uh, things started getting a little hairy towards the end because because uh, uh, things were changing in the music business. You know, uh, and when they started making videos and all the rest of that, you know, we still did not have the interpretation. Every time, even with Tom, um, there were. Uh, a little bit, little changes. He was the, the least of our words, but he, he he would change. He wanted us to change some things. He didn't want us to do love changes, uh, which was, you know. But you know, as far as we were concerned, it fit on that record. You know, it was a ballad. You know, and you are allowed to do ballads on records. You know, I'm I'm, I'm I'm I wasn't a ballad guy, but I, but I <clears throat> excuse me, I liked that one. It worked. Yeah, it did. I mean, and it works right now. Yeah, you know, still today. Uh, so, yeah, studio-wise, um, uh, I wrote my parts. Michael, he was a pretty good writer uh, and a, and an excellent player. Most of the guys who played. Wizard wrote a wrote a, wrote a fair amount of the songs. We collaborated when we could. Guys would bring in bring in songs, and we would say, "Okay, you know, now it's, now it's got to fit." It, if I'm going to do the song, it's got to fit me. If Joyce is going to do it, it's got to fit her. And she would make subtle changes. But but usually the song was pretty much right on, you know. And group songs that we would read, we, we, we made sure that we did songs that were sort of, uh, everybody could s sing a little part of it, you know, uh, just to make them, give them incentives about, you know, putting a record out. But we, we never really had, in, in those times, we never had any problems with, uh, you know, with doing uh, uh, records in the studio. Studio was our friend. Uh, it was just very archaic and very, um, very uh, analog. You know, the sounds were good. You know, and every but we were uh, we were futuristic as uh, any time we could. You know, any time we could be, we got into the future as possible and we could. It was just slow. That's all. You you we wanted to be be faster and we wanted to, to be better. And then we wanted to take our time, if that makes any sense. <clears throat> it does. You mentioned, uh, or we mentioned earlier about Earth, Wind & Fire. I noticed on Mother Factor, Skip Scarborough, who worked with Earth, Wind & Fire, actually was involved in that project too, and, and specifically Love Changes. Um, yeah. Yeah, so is he a, a good cat to work with? No, he wasn't that good. He wasn't good for us at all. He was, uh, that was the record company's attempt to lead us into. Um, we were, if you it, they wanted us to change, so we were saying, you know, and, and producers, uh, we want, we actually wanted Maurice White to, uh, to to produce us, and then they laid Skip on us instead. Um, so, in those days, you don't you there were, you had no control whatsoever. If you wanted this money, if you wanted him to make a record on you, and if you wanted him to put it out, you had to put some rules. So what Skip did, Skip ripped us off. I mean, I, it's, he's gone. He's, he's and, and hopefully, I don't care who knows about it, but he, he stole, he stole uh, Love Changes from Joyce. Um, he and Joyce got in the studio when early one one day and he said I want what he was good at is that he said I want you to I want us to write a song together and uh, and and you have to tell me how you want the song to go with her. and she uh, immediately said you know uh, love changes you know of uh, the changes in love because we were dealing a lot with personal relationships and we were dealing a lot with with uh, uh, spiritual relationships you know um, about as far as love, universal love, people love. So as you were talking about all the changes that 
um, love could bring, you know, sat down and wrote the song. And uh, she actually wrote all the lyrics to it. And she told him and, and he followed the, uh, uh, the, the uh, he was a good, very good Rhodes piano player, you know, and it, and it had to be sort of this straight R&B type of type of thing, which George didn't have a problem with. So um, then we had to go over to Europe right after the right after the session was done, we had to go over to Europe. And as uh, uh, non-business as we were, we did not take care of the writer's rights. And when we came back and it was on a record, it was written by Skip Scarborough, and which wasn't true, you know, and it was one of our biggest records. And we fought it for, for a minute, but it was, it was told to us, first come, you know, if somebody says they wrote the song and we and we didn't have any cover for it, it was too bad, you know. And uh, um, we had to leave it like that, you know. And 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 that's the first and last time that ever happened, you know. Except for the first record we did with people changing stuff, so it just made us a little bit more tainted tainted about about the um, hard, business of doing this. Record. Hard lesson to learn. Hard lesson to learn. Yeah, it is, but it is, it is. He paid with, he paid for it in, in the worst way because he she, she cheated and he lied and he, uh, and he stole, you know, and that's, that's not very godly, you know, it's not very spiritual or, or religious, you know, and, and uh, if you do things like that, you're going to pay, you know, so, so, uh, and that is sort of the, um what's what will be written on the headstone when, when mother's finance is gone is that we accept our fate you know and by accepting one's fate and one's karma it's, it's very simple as far as skip is concerned we did something to him in in the last life that he had to he had to uh do to us in this life but the mistake that he made was rather than turn the other cheek and accept uh, accept what we did to him in his last life, he, he wanted it goes right back to square one again, you know. And uh, he doesn't get payment, and then he's gonna have to have to pay for his bad karma. So we accept everything that has happened to us. We don't begrudge anybody, you know. It it, it gets a little heavy when you when you think where you should be and and where you think you should be, but in the universe of universes and 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 in God and all his wisdom, we're exactly where we're supposed to be in order for us to to complete our transition when we do have to get out of here. You know, and there is a transition. There is there is uh, life after death, you know, uh uh and and there and there is and depending on how you live in this life will depend on if you have to be reincarnated, then then you're gonna have to pay for some some bullshit that you did in this life, and maybe even the last life. And it just keeps piling and piling and piling on top of it. So you know you have to be reincarnated until you pay, until you pay Caesar's Caesar's due. Uh, so in that respect, we do not hold begrudge anybody even those who have bad things about us and some things we've said bad about other people we try to we try to correct that in our in our, and ask for forgiveness you know uh, uh, but and at the same time um we do not begrudge you know we don't hold any ill feelings about about what we think people should have done how they should have treated us you know uh, we have fans and they are loyal. And and if we're not supposed to go another motherfucker, okay. You know, uh it's 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 not it's we're too old for to 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 try to straighten all that out. And then and at the same time we realize that it's a God thing, you know, and we have to let things do it is what it is. Uh, mentally, physically, spiritually, it is what it is. And it's going to be that way. Um, if we were able to change things, we would have. We definitely would have. We think that you know our music was powerful enough for us. But uh, and then 
um, we really follow God's way. And this is where he wants us to be. Um, if you're not where you're supposed to be, then you can't reap the rewards of what, what he's trying to, to give you. And we're healthy and, and we have food, but we still have power and vitality, you know, uh, as far as our business is concerned, as far as music is concerned, we're not rich and famous. And we like the song say, don't drive no Cadillac cars, you know, but, uh, but we manage and, and, you know, as happy as you can be on this planet. So uh, we're looking forward to our progressions and our transitions. And, and, and when we have to face the Almighty, we, we want to say we tried our best and we played our best and we sang our best and, and uh, uh, we wrote our best. Okay. And this is it. Hey, you're putting it all in perspective, Glenn. Um, and I'm glad to hear you have such a, a good head on your shoulders about it all. You know, we're talking about love changes. So I did want to uh, ask you, what were the, uh, were there any challenges to being in a relationship with a band member? Uh, were, were there advantages, challenges? How did you navigate that? Well, uh, 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 you're talking about Joyce and I. Yes, we're married. Our son plays, uh, uh, plays drums for us, you know. Um, um, Joyce, and since the day we met, we've been probably together in the same room at the same time, doing the same thing uh, for, for, I'm not going to put a number on the, on the years because uh, it really doesn't matter. And we've had our rough spots early in our relationship, you know, before we, even before we got married, we didn't marry until uh, we had been into this, uh, this music business for quite some time. And we said, okay, you know, it's time. And pretty much ever since then, everything has been peachy keen. <laughs> uh, we've been with each other almost 24 seven and we have the bestest friends on the planet. I mean, uh, I think she's one of the best people I've ever met besides my mom. Uh, she, she rates right up there with her. And um, uh, my Lord and Master, you know, she is one of the most brilliant people as far as being a human being is concerned that I've ever met in my life. And, and, and I wouldn't change anything. And I'm so glad that I met her. I think she's uh, one of the most talented people. Uh, I think she, I always, if I had to worry about anything, I had to worry about her head. But she's probably, she's in the same space that, 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 that I'm at. She knows that what we've done, we've done in, uh, uh, in the will of the Supreme Being, you know, uh, and, and everybody needs to know that. And this is the way we, we will show them that we, we did everything that we were supposed to do. And this is the way it's supposed to be. Um, if you're not where you're supposed to be when 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 your time is up, then he can't find you, you know. So we're right where we're supposed to be, and uh, and she's 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 very cool. Yeah, like I said, and especially as far as business is concerned, we have our we we have our our, our, our conversations, <laughs> our very um, uh, uh, spirited conversations. She has her own mind. She has the way that she wants things done, and and of course. Trying to deal with somebody like me, that is a, that is definitely a challenge. But uh, she uh, uh, she gets her she, most of the time. She gets her way, well, maybe all of the time, you know, because she has great ideas and she's a, she's a great person. Well, more power to you. It's not easy to navigate through sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Keep rocking on like you guys have. Yeah, well, we. We, we, we did it and we got out of it. The best thing about sex, drugs, and rock and roll is, is that uh, we, we experienced it. Uh, but then when it was time to quit all that, then that's what we did. We were at least um, smart enough to, to, to uh, know that it was, it was detriment to our, to, to our existence and our spirituality and our, and our, and our being that we stop, you know, and use what we had learned, you know. Uh, my uh, 
my father said uh, going to war was a, a million dollar experience that he wouldn't give a nickel to do again. And that's why I feel about going through what we went through. Um, it was something I'm glad I went through it because I understand it and, and, and judge appropriately. If I if I had to do it all over again, I probably wouldn't have wouldn't have touched the the drugs. But hey, it's over and done, and I survived. You know, and I can tell my kids, and I can tell my son, my grandkids that I, you know, if you know know how to 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 stop, you know, know how to get rid of it, know how to change. It's life, really. It was time. It was a time in our lives when we had to change. And we took advantage of that. We were shown the way, and we changed, and and uh, and all the better for it. Clan, I got like two or three more questions. If you'll indulge me, and then we can wrap this up. Okay. Um, I want to ask you: Do you have a couple of particular songs that Mother's Fine has created, and maybe also an album that are your personal favorites? And if so, which ones and why? Um. Actually, my personal favorites are some of the songs that that that, I, that, that didn't make it up. We did a record, and then we did a, a meme personally, uh, uh, a, a song that I did called "I Believe." That was that's one of my favorite songs. It comes off a lot better live. And then another one was uh, uh, "Way of the World," you know, which I'm going to do over again. I'm actually going to do all those songs over again. I'm going to uh, when I have the time, I'm going to do all the songs that that I think should have been heard, you know. But they were well written and they have a message. You know, will is is uh is so appropriate for today. It's 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 insane. It's a uh it's a dog eat dog world that we live in. This I know. Uh uh it's a dog eat dog world that we live in, this I know. And to the friends and seventeen and missing foes. I don't understand why, the, why people can't get along, and I don't know why. The winds of destruction blow so strong. That's the way of the world. And we got to change it. Uh, I hear the thunder of gunfire all around me. I see the, uh, God, I, I see the, something of fellow man out on the street. And I didn't even write this one. My best friend did that. But it, it's really good. And, 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 and it's, a, it's kind of a Marvin Gaye type of, uh, type of song. But it describes what's going on, and I believe it's a very spiritual song. Um, it's about be uh, believing in a higher power, you know, and letting that co um, have have be a co relationship with 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 us as a human being, and not try to do things on our own. To to listen, you know, to and to believe, you know. I believe that the brightest light. Uh, lives in the darkness. I believe that when you concentrate, that's moving in a stone. I believe that God has counted every hair on, on our heads, and I believe that there is one living, walking around in the valley of the of the dead. You know, it's a really it's kind of sounds a little low, but it's a very spiritual song about about believing that there is a as, as a higher power. Those are my favorite songs. Uh, but 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 I I, I enjoy doing. You know, putting them away and bringing them back out again. Rain, uh, joins does power. Uh, piece of the rock is something I, I have to do. You know, I do niggas groove. I do niggas can't sing rock and roll. And, and I think there's another double G <laughs> Negro song that I do that I love doing because you know. Uh, and the, I, I think the only thing uh, about those songs is that, uh, that sometimes it's hard to get past that word. You know, and really listen to the song that one day we'll listen to it. So those are my the controversial ones. Joyce is the love song person. I am the, the I, I want to know about poli uh, politics, spirituality, racism. You know, which I haven't even touched on. To be honest with you, I have uh, the direct the next record that I do. I'm going to do a solo record, and it's just going to be for the just so I can say what I what I need to say, and get rid of it. You know, well, if if somebody could only get one Mother's Finest album, though, which one would you say? It would be probably the, um, you know, the first two or three is 
I mean, live is, uh, I would say, yeah, I, it, it couldn't be one. If you really wanted to enjoy yourself, you know, half of the songs that were written on all these records, um, the first one, the second one, even even the uh, the the uh, uh, the heavy metal uh, record that we did, heavy metal to us, it wasn't that heavy, uh, heavy metal. And Rock Palace, Rock Palace is something. Behold, I think that people ought to. Uh, uh, the only thing is, is that the sound wasn't super duper great in in seventy six, nineteen seventy six. And Iron Age you is know, a is a metal one. Yeah, Iron Age is uh, that's <laughs> that's a uh, uh, Holland's favorite record. Iron Age, love that record to death. You know, and they still play it. You know, underground. They're very pop oriented, but they, but you know, the uh, the underground still lives. Well, Glenn, I like to ask uh, the guests. You know, the show's called Truth and Rhythm. So, you know, what to you is truthful? in the music and rhythms that you create? How do you keep it truthful? That's the, the whole thing at the beginning of the conversation is that, you know, we made a decision that we were going to uh, stick to mother's finest stuff. Sometimes it's not as good as it should be. Sometimes it's brilliant, you know, uh, but I think that, that, that there is a legacy uh, and, uh, and it's because we, I mean, sometimes we have a problem with, oh, God, I don't want to do that one again. And then when we do it well, and we'll put it away for a while, and then we'll bring it back and say, wow, that's, and it's, it's like, it's like refreshing, you know? Um, um, but I don't know, we, for that, that's pro probably, if you wanted to say that was been our biggest problem, is sticking to, sticking to the rhythm, you know? Uh, being a slave to, our, to a rhythm, to our own beat, our own drummer. Uh, uh, as to stay, stay there and try to uh, expound on it. Like I said, sometimes it sometimes it works great. Sometimes it doesn't. You know, and uh, when we veer away from that, like I, you know, I, I gotta say that the last record that we did, we kind of veered away from um, a lot because we wanted everybody to express themselves in it because it was a crowdfunding thing and. Uh, 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 we figured that people were wanted to hear uh, uh, what Dion, how, this kind of songs he wrote, More Wizard, Joyce's songs, uh, the songs that I wrote. You know, Mo wrote two brilliant songs. One didn't make it uh, on the record, you know, and we want to do that again. Uh, um, and who else? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's always been this thing that we wanted to, we wanted to 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 get everybody involved, you know. Um, some of these guys are kind of floating away a little bit as far as their ideology is concerned. They, they get a little tired. They get a little weary. Uh, Joyce and I, we don't have that problem because just because we know that when that day is ended, it is ended exactly the way it was supposed to, and then we rejoice when we wake up in the morning and. Uh, 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 that that there's another day, and because there's another day, um, we live on, and we have to pay for that day. You know, God woke us up in the middle of the night in order for us to to complete this day, and whatever's supposed to happen to it, then when it's over, boom, it's it's over. As is life, you know. It's only it's and life is not over when it's over. It just really and 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 I could tell you stories. Um, it just begins, really, you know, and then that will give you that will give people strength, you want to say, or, or light to keep on. We, 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 we're we bombarded with especially with all the crap that's going on today. It's it's depressing, you know, and uh, we're more depressed than we were. I mean, it was great times back in the 60s and the 70s. You know, everybody was 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 opening up, you know, technology was breaking in and, and now it seems so right now as though everybody's a little bit sad a lot sad in, in a lot of cases and 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 but you have to don't worry be happy 
you have to not worry because it is what it's it is what it is right now today and tomorrow is going to be a whole lot better but you got to hang in there you know and you can't be sad about it because it's it's happening the way it's supposed to happen you know and and on and on you know it's it's uh uh it's great i mean you know it's all good <laughs> somebody said it and 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 you have to pay attention to it it's all good everything is good even what seems to be very bad you know because you at least gets to experiencing it to experience yeah. it you know? i love that attitude glenn love it um so how can uh, people keep up with mother's finest um is there any chance that you guys might start doing some shows I in america know. outside of the atlanta area anytime soon and what yeah, else is we, going on we, we did we just did i mean uh unfortunately we're better known in the southeast down in florida we get up to uh uh dc when we can new york every now and again excuse me uh but uh uh we're getting ready to sort of uh uh rewind pause and fast forward we're going to the, the, our, our websites have been poor. Uh, Facebook has been uh, not what it's supposed to be. I'm looking for people and have found some people who can do all that stuff because, like I said before, I'm not a I'm not a fan, but I do understand that this is the new way that fans get in touch. We have done well without it, but we should do much better with it. And uh, we're going to update all our all of our sites. This this is a New Year's resolution that we made for 2000, 2018. Uh, and uh, uh, we're going to be keeping more in touch. Joyce's Joyce, we're working on Joyce's record. Record's going to be. I enjoy the heck out of it. I mean, I enjoy it so much that I just like to keep working on it. And that's not <laughs> that's not really cool. <laughs> I have the, the guy that just called. He's helping me produce, and I have another guy that, that's uh, uh, helping me produce to make it, to bring it modern to where it's not recognizable about what she's doing, but uh, just a little bit more modern and to, to and and to keep what's going on. She's making another record. As soon as I get a chance, I'm gonna uh, I'll make another record. And and the band, uh, we're we're, uh, we're gonna slow down on the uh, on. Uh, the band making music for for a time, and then uh, it has been suggested that let's make two or three songs and just put it out there, you know, because they they're still writing new one. But we're, but we're going to make a, a concerted effort to be more visible people here in the United States and in Europe. That's what we're going to do to try to. To, to keep it moving as long as we can. And like I said before, we feel really good. I feel fantastic. Joyce is, like I said, she's she's a wonder woman. And she's she feels fantastic. Her spirit is very bright. That's awesome. Awesome. Well I look forward to those new projects and um you know we'll catch the shows where and when we can. Um, and I want to remind people again, this anthology came out last year. It's a great uh, two CD set. Yeah, it um, is. Yeah, love changes. So uh, with that, I'm going to wrap Sorry. it up. Uh, Glenn, if you could just uh, hang tight for a second while I do that. Um, okay. Huge thanks to uh, Mr. Glenn Murdoch, co-founder and vocalist for the trailblazing funk rock band Mother's Finest, a band whose influence and presence continues to be felt today. Thank you so much for sharing your time, your experiences. Good stuff, Glenn. My pleasure. I always, I like to talk, <laughs> as you can tell. <laughs> I enjoyed it. Be sure to look out for upcoming Truth and Rhythm episodes and catch up on previous installments at funkinstuff.net and on YouTube, iTunes, and other leading providers. Want to hear from you? Drop me an email at scottg at funkinstuff.net. Let me know who else you might want to see on the show, what you like, what you don't like. Until next time, on behalf, of Mr. Hey, let me tell you, this is before you go, I want to let you know that you're doing great work. I like it, and I, and I wish you lots of success. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. On behalf of, to worry, brother. On behalf of Glenn, this is Scott Dr. GX Goldfine, as always, saying keep on vibrating to the rhythm of the one. <laughs>